Hey, welcome to Mama Mandala. I'm Hagar. I'm so glad to have this moment with you. Listen, do you ever go through mood swings? Do you ever feel like you're just on a roller coaster of life that everything is happening really fast and there's there's so much going on and there's this great upheaval in the world and it's affecting your personal life and your moods are just all over the place. There's moments when you feel like, okay, you can handle this and you can do this and you can take charge. And there's moments when you feel like you're just in the in the in the pit of despair as they call it in princess bride right just a full-on immersion in the sorrow of the world and your own struggles so first of all I just want you to know that whatever it is that you're experiencing you're not alone and that I don't want I don't want to say it's normal because there's it's such a stupid word right like what is normal really but it's, there's room for your experience. Whatever it is that you're experiencing, there's, there's room for it. Now, one thing that I encounter in the yoga tradition is that the, the, the let's say the, the popular message that we hear from yoga in the world today is that yoga is equanimity. And it comes from classical yoga. It comes from the, if you've ever heard of the Patanjali Yoga Sutras, we, we often refer to that text as, this is the text of yoga because it's called the Yoga Sutras. But in fact, there are many other texts and many other philosophies within the yoga traditions that are, that are going to have different ways of looking at at what yoga is. There are, in the Bhagavad Gita, for example, there are, I forget how many, but there's more than a hundred, more than a hundred times when the word yoga is mentioned, and there are so many different definitions of what yoga is. So yoga is connection. Yoga is, it comes from the verb root yuj in Sanskrit, which means to yoke. So yoga can be anything that you yoke yourself to whether consciously or unconsciously. So yoga doesn't have to be the equanimity of your mind, the equanimity of your emotional and mental state, but yoga can also be how you're, how you're moving through the cycles, how you're, this is such a cliche, so I'm annoyed saying it, but how you're riding the waves, right? How are you moving with and moving through the ups and the downs, the circles and the cycles, how you're traveling through the different spirals of your life? how you're doing it, how you're choosing to do it, how you're empowering yourself to do it, how, re how receptive are you to the experiences that are coming your way and that are coming through you and that are emerging from within you? How are you choosing to engage it, to yoke yourself to it? There's, there's an infinite ways in which we can in which we can yoke ourselves to the process of yoking, to yoke ourselves to the process of yoga, to connect ourselves to where we are. So we're going to do a practice that allows us to move with what is going on in our lives right now. Instead of trying to stabilize yourself, which it's a, I'm not speaking against stability, but rather offering us a, another, um, another trajectory, another avenue, another way, because to stabilize and ground can be very helpful at moments and other moments moving with and allowing the turmoil to move through us is going to be the transformative um, route that is going to lead us into a new place, perhaps sometimes a better place, an evolutionary way. So there's a lot of ways for us to do this yoga thing and there's a lot of ways for us to do this life thing and life in the world right now is a lot. So let, let's give ourselves a, a, a moment to move with what is going on, whatever it is, to move with, to swing with this, the, the mood swings, to move with it. So come to all fours, to your hands and your knees, on your mat, if you have a yoga mat, and if you don't, that's quite all right. You can do this on the floor. We're gonna spread the fingers and root the hands into the earth evenly. Because even if we 
if we are arguing, but that we're not always having to make things even, right? We're not looking, if we're not looking for equanimity, a little bit of equanimity, a little bit of groundedness and stability is a good thing. And you can swing your hips a little side to side as I'm doing here, as you root your hands into the floor. Notice how the outer edges of your hands want to root more deeply, they're heavier and the inner edges tend to get a little lighter. What happens when we let that happen is that more weight goes into our, into, um, our wrists and that can, be, um, that can be damaging and painful and cause all kinds of trouble and problems. So as you move your hips side to side, focus on the inner edges of your hands rooted in, rooting into the earth and the tips of your fingers grounding and almost like they're they're anchoring like you're digging into the floor and we, you can move your hips around a little bit. Like you are circling yourself as you circle your hips around, you're circling around what is happening in your life right now, what is happening in you right now. You're moving into it instead of trying to move away from it and you can circle in the opposite direction. Sometimes moving away from it is also good. Again, I'm not speaking against it, just offering us this way, another way. There's all kinds of ways that we can engage in what is going on. And then bring yourself to center and inhale, reach your hips back and your chest forward so that you're moving into cow and then exhale and round your back and look in towards your navel. Draw the sides of the ribs towards the center of your belly. And then inhale, reach your pubic bone back, your hips back, and your chest forward and let your belly stretch. And then exhale, engage your belly as you look in towards your navel and round your back. And I don't know if you can see this, you can keep moving like that with your breath, inhale to arch your back. But my knees are a little bit behind my hips. That's also going to be helpful for the wrist. So, Exhale and round your back. So you can move your knees a little bit behind the hips to help your wrists feel a little better. Inhale, hips back, chest forward. And exhale, look in towards your navel. And if you haven't already, bring a tone to the back of the throat and engage ujjayi breath. Inhale, bring your spine to the space between cat and cow, so between arch and round. And if your toes are not tucked under, tuck them under and reach up and back into downward facing dog, Adomukha Svanasana. Now, if this is not good for you right now for um, this weight bearing position on your hands, you can always, when we do downward dog, you can always have your hands on, the, on a chair or on a wall and reach your hands into the wall so that you're still getting this stretch for your hamstring, stretch for your lower back. Okay, so if you can't have your hands on the ground, have your hands on something else and do a little L position with your body. Inhale and reach your right leg up. And exhale, bring your shoulders over your wrist and bring your knee in towards your nose. And again, you can do that if your hands are not on the floor and they're at, at the wall, same thing. Inhale, reach your right leg back. Move with what is moving in your life. Exhale, bring your knee to the outside of your hand. You can also always inhale with your right leg back, bring the left knee to the floor to do this, okay? And exhale, bring your right knee outside of your left elbow and inhale, reach your right leg back. And with an exhalation, bring your right foot to the outside of your right hand and bring your left knee to the floor. If you need padding for your left knee, you can fold your mat like this, or you could put a blanket under there. And move your hips a little bit side to side. Root your hands and both of your feet into the earth, but move your hips a little side to side and breathe. Slow inhalation through a tone in the back of the throat and a slow exhalation through a tone in the back of the throat. So through your breath, you're connecting to the movement of life through you, in you, around you. And that tone in the back of the throat, that's our engagement, that's our yoking, that's our connection to the movement, to the cycles, to the phases and the waves. 
Deep breath in. And with an exhalation, stretch up and back into downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Hands are rooted, tips of the fingers root down. Breath slow and deep. Inhale and lift your right, left leg up. Keep grounding deeply down through the hands. Exhale, bring your left knee in towards your nose. And again, you can do this with your hands at, on a wall instead of on the floor. Inhale and reach your leg back. And you can do that with your right knee on the floor if you need to. Exhale, bring your left knee outside of your right arm. Left arm, so sorry. Inhale, reach the leg back. And now cross with your exhalation, the knee over the body to the right side. Leg back, deep breath in. Exhale, bring your foot outside of your left hand and bring your right knee down to the floor. And again, the hands and the feet root down and let the hips move a little bit side to side. We wanna stabilize enough and create a, a boundaries and a vessel. Uh, we are a vessel, right? We are, we are this powerful, beautiful, um, uh, uh, <laughs> a, a, like a beautiful cauldron or a beautiful cup that receives life's liquidity, right? So make yourself strong and, and grounded, but then let things let things move because the vessel itself is also be, it's not only gonna um, give shape to the liquidity of life, but it's also gonna change by the liquids, right? Over time, water changes what holds it. Water changes the shape of rocks. Breathe slowly, deep breath. So let life change you. Don't have, have such equanimity that you are not changed by what's going on. Oh my gosh, that would be, Kind of terrible. Exhale, step back, downward facing dog. Don't you think if we're not changed by life, by what is happening to us, around us, that is a loss of opportunity. That is like the missing of the point in a way. Inhale, bring your knees down to the floor. And exhale, bring your hips uh, forward and down to the floor. Bend the elbows a little bit and lift your chest forward and up and point your feet and root your toenails into the floor. Lift your chest up, deep breath in. And then let your cobra, let your, let your position move a little bit side to side the way that snakes do. This undulation, this circularization and this waviness, this slithery kind of quality is moving with life. That's why the serpent is such a powerful symbol and so ancient, deep breath in. And so complex too. Exhale, back into child's pose. Bring your big toes to touch, knees wide apart, and then move your upper body a little bit side to side. You can have your forearms on the floor, but move your torso a little bit side to side so more of the outside of your ribs can snuggle on the inside of your thighs. Bring your forehead to the ground and deep breath in, slow inhale. And a slow breath out. And then at the same time, as we're letting life change us, as we're allowing things to move through us and, and, and we shift the contours of who we are, shift with the experiences that we're having, we are also in charge and empowered to change this, the shape, to change the situation. So it's not only changing us, but we're changing it according to our choice and decision, but not 100% because we're not 100% in control, right? Bring yourself to all fours again. Inhale. And exhale. Bring your hips again forward to the floor. Press down through your hands. Point your feet, spread your toes, and broaden through your collarbones. Draw the front of the, the shoulders, the heads of your arm bones, toward the back plane of your body so you can lift your chest up, but keep rooting down through the inner edges of your hands. 
And then exhale back into child's pose. Big toes touch, knees wide apart, forehead to the floor, forearms to the floor, and then inhale. Send yourself to all four, hands and knees. Exhale, bring your hips down and your chest forward and up. Point your feet, spread your toes. Deep, slow inhale in Cobra. Slow exhalation back into child's pose, back into the soft space, knees wide apart, big toes touch, forehead to the ground, forearms to the ground, and then again, inhale, transition to all fours, hands and knees. Exhale, hips down, chest forward and up, point your feet, spread your toes, lift your chest, deep, slow inhale. And exhale into child's pose again. Slow breath to all fours. And a slow exhalation up and back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, hands rooted, hips up, heels towards the earth. Deep breath in, ground deeply down through your hands. And with a slow exhalation, walk your hands back towards your feet into Uttanasana, forward bend, balls of the feet, heavy, and energetically pull your heels back so the backs of your legs strengthen. Inhale, look forward, halfway up. Slowly exhale and fold back in. If you need to bend your knees in order to be able to touch the floor, please do so. So listen to where you are. Inhale, look forward. If you need to put your hands on blocks, maybe on a stool or even on a chair, exhale, fold in. If your legs don't, don't straighten with your hands on the floor, puts, elevate the floor, lift the floor up to meet you. Inhale, look forward again, halfway up. And with a slow exhalation, fold back in, engage the backs of your legs, engage your glutes. So squeeze your butt a little bit, pull your heels back again energetically so the backs of your legs are strong and the balls of the feet are heavy, grounded, rooted into the earth. Now, Come up with an inhalation. You can bend your knees on the way up. Inhale, circle the arms up. Move with your life. Exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart. Move with what is going on. Inhale and reach your arms up high. Exhale, bend the knees and reach your arms out through the sides and come all the way back down, fingertips to the floor, legs straight or knees bent, whatever is needed for you. Inhale, stretch your chest forward, pull your heels energetically back as you root through the balls of the feet. Exhale slowly and fold back in, slow the movement of life as you slow your breath down. Inhale. Bend the knees, circle the arms up. Wouldn't that be amazing if that was possible? But maybe in some ways, exhale, slowly bring your hands together in front of your heart. There's something to that, to slowing the breath down. It helps us become a little bit more present in the moment, right? Inhale, reach out. And then that shifts our experience of time. Exhale, bend the knees and reach your arms through the sides and all the way back down to the floor and legs can be straight or bent. Inhale, look forward, halfway up. Exhale, fold in. And if you notice the movements that we're um, practicing and doing in this practice today, inhale and circle the arms up, are repetitive. We're repeating the movement a few times. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart because the movement of life is recursive. It's, we, we meet ourselves again in similar places. Things repeat themselves. Inhale, reach up. That's why sometimes we feel like we make great progress, progress in a, the work on ourselves. Exhale, bend the knees and bring your fingertips to the floor or even in our work in the world, in the world, right? Inhale, look forward. And then there's what feels like regression, but it's like uh, we meet something again. Exhale, walk your hands forward and come back into downward facing dog. We can see that the way that um, things repeat themselves historically. Reach the hips back. Lift your hips up towards the sky. Root down through your hands. Reach down through your heels. And then inhale, bring your knees down to the floor. 
and bring yourself to a seated position. You can sit on the floor, that's what I'm gonna do. You can sit up on a blanket to elevate your hips a little bit. You can sit on a chair too, that's totally fine. Move your hips a little bit side to side so that your hips are grounded on a more wider base. And we'll, we'll breathe here for a moment. Focusing on the movement of the breath, but we'll also bring attention to the pause, to the space between the breath. We're gonna count to five on our, on our way in, the inhalation, and then we'll hold the breath for a moment. Couple of counts to hold. I'll guide you through it, don't worry. And then exhale for five counts, and then hold the breath for two counts. So rest your hands on your thighs, and if you'd like, you can bring the thumb and the index fingers to touch in Chin Mudra, or Yana Mudra has a couple of different names. And allow your eyes to soften. Your eyes can close as well if you prefer. Or they can stay open if that feels more resourceful and comfortable for you. Stay with your Ujjayi breath with a tone in the back of the throat. With that deep engagement in life force, in prana. And then inhale deeply all the way. And through your mouth one time, exhale out. And then we're gonna breathe through the nose. Inhale for one, two, three, four, five. Hold, two, exhale, two, three four, five, hold, two, inhale, two, three, four, five, through the tone in the back of the throat, and exhale, two, three, four, five, hold, two, inhale, two, three, four, five, hold, Two, exhale, two, three, four, five, hold, two, inhale, hold, exhale, hold, inhale. Hold, exhale, hold, inhale, hold, exhale, hold, couple more rounds on your own. Just allow the breath to move without counting. A couple more rounds of Ujjayi breath without restricting the breath other than Ujjayi. And then you can release your Ujjayi and sit for a couple of more moments, allowing the breath to breathe you without effort. And listen, if you have time right now to lie down and rest on your back, that would be wonderful. But if you need to go, I'm going to say thank you so, so much for joining me.
appreciate having this moment with you. Even Gracie, my dog, wanted to join us. And if you like this video, please put a like on it, share it with your friends, with your family, with anyone you think could benefit from it. And also subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and subscribe to our mailing list over on mamamandala.com. You'll get a free guide to spark your inspiration and inspirational, evocative, thought-provoking emails in your mailbox on a weekly-ish basis, sometimes a little bit more depending on what we have going on. So I'll leave a link for you in the description of the video and I'm so grateful to have had this moment with you. Thank you for joining me and I hope to see you soon. Namaste.